Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie. I am a serial entrepreneur. I have founded two companies with my husband, Milo Tree, the pop up app, and Catch My Party. I'm a business coach and a business translator. I love all things business. So I take what's working and I break it down so you can use these strategies in your own blog and make more money. Before I get started, I wanted to ask you if you wanted to get cliff notes from me every week in a newsletter I send out where I take my most recent episode and I share my four biggest takeaways. This way, you can stay up to date in what is going on in online business and blogging, and then you can decide if you want to listen to the episode. So if that is interesting to you, head to bloggergenius.com and sign up. I promise you, my newsletters are short and sweet and hopefully useful. For today's episode, I have Michaela Preston on the podcast. She's the founder of Mindful Mommy. So her blog helps people make lifestyle and product choices that are better for their health and for the planet. She's solving her own problem and in the process, really helping others live better lives. She is an old school blogger like me. We talk about the flexibility of blogging and how it can change and evolve with you as your life changes and evolves. One thing before I launch in, my recording, my sound is a little weird. It's not bad, and I think you'll get used to it, and I definitely think the episode is worth listening to. I just wanted to give you that heads up. So here is my interview with Michaela Preston. Michaela, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here, Jillian. So I love talking to OG bloggers and you are one of them. So could you share how you got into blogging, what your journey was like and where you are now? Yes. Well, yes, I definitely am an OG blogger. I started my blog back in 2006 And when I started it, um, I had been, I had two boys, they were ages two and six. And I was doing a lot of research because I was concerned about the products that I was using on them and in our home and um, about toxic chemical exposures and also environmental things. And I was just, you know, doing a lot of research about this. And so, and at the same time, I discovered the medium of blog, blogs, which was relatively new at the time. It wasn't brand new, but I had discovered it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I love it. So I decided that I could start a blog and share what I was learning and researching with other people. Um, and I could do it for free. You know, at the time I used TypePad, which was, um, you know, before I even knew about WordPress. And so um, it was just a free space that I could use. And And it was really kind of like that online diary as well. It was, you know, a place to share what, you know, life was like with my kids and the things I was doing and, but also the products that I was using and what I was learning along the way. So that's really how it started. And then um, a couple of years in, I actually got a book deal from a publisher uh, that approached me and wanted me to write a book about green and healthy living. So uh, I should mention that my blog is called Mindful Mama, and uh, my mission with the blog is to help people make lifestyle and product choices that are safer for themselves and for the planet. So that's the goal of my blog, and that was also uh, what I wrote my book about. My book is called Practically Green, and um, but that was over ten years ago already that I wrote this book. (laughs) So, um, but but you know that was also what kind of kicked off that. You know, hey, this maybe could be more than just a hobby, uh, which wasn't something I had really thought about. And around that same time, too, um, brands started contacting me because, you know, brands were also discovering this space of bloggers and, you know, that they could get, you know, this exposure to uh, people would ex- be exposed to their products and brands through blogs. And so um, I had a lot of brands approach me and I was doing sponsored posts and things like that. So it really kind of kicked off this idea that, hey, this this could be 
you know, a bit of a business. Um, for many years, it was just more of a sidekick. I also, you know, I was obviously raising two kids and I was, um, I also have a marketing background, so I was still doing some consulting on the side, but I kind of turned it into this kind of health and wellness focus and, you know, kind of went along that path for a while, just doing the blog part time and some other consulting. Um, but in about 2016 was when I first decided I want to really turn this, you know, into more of a true business and really put my, my, you know, my heart and soul into it and try to see what I can do with this blog. And so I took my first blogging course, you know, and that was really helpful because and do you know what it was and do you recommend yeah. it or, okay. Yeah. It was called, um, blog smarter. And I believe the, the program still exists, although not with the same person who founded it. So, you know, I, I can't speak to what it's like today, but it was great for me. It really helped me, um, just focus in and think strategically about everything, you know, all those things that you need to do if you really want to build, um, build a blog as a business. And, you know, now it's 2021. And I would say that, you know, the growth of my blog is, it's not, it never like skyrocketed, but it has grown steadily with, you know, what I have been doing. And I have continued to educate myself, take more courses, do many different things. And now, you know, it is, I do make a full-time income from it. And um, so it's, you know, it's just turned into a great, a great way for me to make a living, still teach what I love to do. Um, I, my kids are a little older now, but, you know, I was able to raise my kids and, and do what I loved and, and be flexible and all those things that, you know, is just so great about having a blog. Totally. And that's what I would say. Blogs are great because they can go through seasons. So while you were raising your kids and you didn't have the time to do it full time, you could still do it in the background. But you had this thing that you had been building. And by the way, Google rewards that. It looks at your blog and says, wow, you've been blogging for a while. You've been blogging consistently about this specific topic. You must know what you're talking about. So when you're ready and your kids have now gotten older and can feed and dress themselves, you can turn it up when you have that time and you put, you've kind of planted seeds that mm -hmm. help it grow. So when you said you kind of, you became more intentional, let's say in 2018 and then 16. it's been oh, 2016, what mm -hmm. did you do? What were the things that you changed or focused in on? Well, I, um, first of all, I, uh, did revise my blog. I, I switched it over to WordPress and I created a new design and a format, which made it a lot more clear that this was not a hobby blog, that this was a, a resource for people to come to. So, you know, I, I just made it clear from visually that it was a resource for um, people who are looking to um, learn more about natural and eco-friendly lifestyles. Uh, and and I started using like uh, lead magnets to get build an email list and, um, you know, just determine my posts more strategically, um, my blog posts, instead of just, you know, back when I was doing it just with young kids, it was more like, oh, whenever I can fit it in and about whatever I feel like it. And, you know, it was now it's much more strategic where I think, OK, this is what I really want to educate people about. This is what people are asking me about. Um, so I really changed that format of, you know, how I was delivering content and just being more strategic about kind of everything to do with it, you know, the whole package. So do you, let's talk about then, you started monetizing via sponsored posts. And now what are the different ways in which you monetize and when did they come on board? Like when oh, were yes. you able to add yeah, them? So I, I do have a, you know, four pronged, um, monetization for four pieces of monetization. Um, and those are affiliates, ads, sponsored posts, and my own digital products. Mm. Um, so the uh, currently the affiliates are really my biggest source of income. Um, and but when I first started, those were very, very small, you know, I started with Amazon associates, just like a lot of people do. And, and that that's kind of a smaller, you know, uh, source of income for most people, unless you're really uh, really have lots of page views, but, um, and then I just started finding other little, you know, places to, uh, become an affiliate for, um, products that I was using and believed in, of course. Um, and then, uh, I've, you know, been lucky to have found some that have, 
uh, had larger payouts, you know, so um, some of my uh, sources of affiliates might be a bit surprising, but mattresses, for instance, like organic and natural mattresses, I have a blog post that does extremely well about that. And those, because they're high, high priced items, you make a, a larger amount from affiliate income. And so that is, you know, a great source of income for me. No, wait, uh, let's we step back for a second. Did mm -hmm. you write the blog post knowing that you were going to be promoting mattresses and that this had a high payout? Or was this like an accidental thing? Like you wanted to write about mattresses and then say, I don't know if you went to share a sale or someplace like that and said, wait a second, they've got an affiliate program. How did you figure that out? Which way? Um, I already knew that I could make money from it. Um, and I, I believe it started with one brand approaching me and saying, would you like a free mattress? And then if you want to promote our, you know, we have an affiliate program. And so I, I went down that path and then realized there was other brands that I could also promote. And over the years I've, you know, worked with a few different brands, um, that way, but, um, and then, but what I didn't realize and I guess in some ways I got a bit lucky, but that Google would would pick me up as being an expert in this topic and that this I am now, you know, pretty high up in the Google search for people searching for organic and natural mattresses. So I didn't realize how good this was going to be. I knew that I was going to try, but I, you know, you know how it is. You don't always know which which posts are going to take off with uh, Google search for, you know, despite your best SEO efforts, they don't always work out. This one did. And so I feel you know grateful for that. And, you know, I have a, you know, a few other good ones in terms of um, some of them are like cookware or people buying food products or uh, memberships to food sites online, those kind of things. So affiliates have been a good source of income for Interesting. sure. So with this mattress post, when did you initially post it? Do you remember how many years ago? Um, I don't know for sure, but I've republished them since then because I keep them relevant. That's I wanted, what I wanted to ask yeah. you. So what's so, okay. So you've got this money post and was it, did it take off immediately or did it take a while for it to start? It took to pay a off? while. Yeah. I can't tell you exactly when I first published it, but I think what happened was I started to realize, oh, this is getting more traction. Like, look at this. Google's, you know, giving me some, some page views from this. And so I started paying attention and then over time, I added more brands to it. I beefed it up. I re I've republished it um, because I want to keep it relevant uh, it, because that's important for SEO. You can't just you know ignore a post once it's um, doing well. If you just ignore it forever, it might you know, Google might be like eh, or somebody else comes along and writes a better post. So I try to pay attention. I look in my Google search console to see um, what keywords it's uh it's receiving uh views from and ranking for so that's helped um, then wait do you, do you look at those keywords then do you go back to the post and make sure to add those specific keywords sometimes yeah i don't like i don't want to mess with it like every week or anything like that like i don't want to mess with it too often but i pay attention and maybe on the big ones maybe once a month or so i'm looking at them just to make sure and how often would you say you are republishing or adding new content well, to them? Yeah, I might, um, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a set schedule for that, but maybe every couple of months I would go in and add a little bit of content, a little few keywords or something like that, making sure the links are still active as well and nothing's broken in there. Um, and then, but, but then in terms of actually republishing it to like the today's current date, I don't do that very often, but my, Actually, my goal is to do that about once a year for my top posts mm. to make sure that I'm keeping them. And not only that, but I'm also I'm also sharing that content with my email lists and my social media and everything because those are important posts for me. So I want to keep them relevant and upfront with everybody. Now, is Pinterest a big source of traffic for you? Yes, um, it's about twenty to twenty five percent of my traffic. Okay. So yes. So Google um, is your biggest traffic driver. Yes. Interesting. Yes, by okay. Far. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Pinterest is, um, I mean, I think, you know, I'm not a recipe blog per se. I have a few recipes, but I know like recipes and crafts. I do have a few DIY like uh, 
cleaning products and body care and other like eco-friendly things. So those always do well, but my other content does pretty well too. I do a lot of uh, product roundups where I'm sharing like the top uh, eco-friendly laundry detergents or natural deodorants and things like that. So that does well on Pinterest. Um, and again, I try to keep it relevant. I keep creating new pins and putting them out there and making sure that I'm keeping, uh, keeping things rolling with Pinterest, especially with those uh, top posts and the, and the posts that make income. <laughs> well, what I like about what you're saying is those top posts are assets to you and you treat them as such. So they're like yeah. stocks in the stock market or money in your bank account or whatever, and that you're nurturing them. You're making sure that they keep their value, if not grow in value. Yes, yes, definitely. And it, it took me a long time to realize that. But now I realize it that, that and I like your word asset. It's really true. <laughs> so now then, okay, so you, you discovered affiliates. And then when did you turn on ads? How did that work? Um, what year was that? I'm trying to remember what year it was. But you know, definitely quite a few years ago that I finally made uh, Mediavine, like made the um, it had enough page views to apply to Mediavine. And so then I turned that on and that's been great. Um, you know, just really helpful to have that extra source of income, which is basically passive. You know, it's there all the time coming in. And um, the bit, the more I can grow my page views, the more I can grow my, uh, my ad revenue. So, so that's really helpful. Um, I think I started with... Um, gourmet ads uh before i could get into media vine but then now i'm now i'm with media vine so and then you started it. your own products so talk to me about how you thought of that what you created where you sell them and how that's going for you yeah well that's a relatively new part of my income stream so it's very small at this point but it's going to grow um so i currently have a um an ebook that is um uh eco-friendly brands guide. So it's basically sharing like all the top eco-friendly brands with clickable links so that people can get to what they're looking for easily. But it's also a um, source of revenue for me because it, those links are affiliate links whenever it's, whenever those are available. So, um, but I'm, I'm currently using that more as a tripwire. Um, and I mean, it's available all the time on my blog for sale, but it's, I also use it as a tripwire through my lead magnets. So when someone joins my email list through one of my lead magnets, I have many of them, then they get served the opportunity to buy my brand's guide at a low price. So um, that, you know, is, is a good little, you know, trickle of income coming in. But then the bigger thing that I'm working on is an online course. So um, I'm working on that right now. And I'm really excited to be launching that in mid May of this year. And it's called easy home detox. And it's a beginner's guide to helping people detox their home and products. So Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an online course with videos and um, other content, lots of other content, and it'll really help walk people through the process of all the things that you can do to detox your home and um, through both habits and the products that you're using in your home. And so that will be launching soon and I'm very excited about that. So let's talk about your lead magnets for a second. You said you have many. So how mm -hmm. many do you have? How did you start creating them? And what do they look like? Mm. Um, I don't know how many I have. I should probably add them up, but <clears throat> I've created them for various posts over the years. And then I've created some that are not really associated with one blog post, but more of a general one. So like the primary one that I'm featuring right now is um, 10 easy ways to detox your home because that leads in and gets people started down the path leading to the course that I will be offering soon. Um, so, and I have another one called a greenwashing guidebook, which helps people uh, understand what greenwashing is and how to um, look at products and not be fooled by greenwashing. Um, what is greenwashing? What is greenwashing? Oh, greenwashing is when companies um, try to make their their products look um, 
green and eco-friendly and natural and healthy by putting little logos on there or little pictures of flowers or saying things like natural, which really doesn't have a definition um, legally. Uh, and but yet their products might still be filled with toxic chemicals, you know, like a laundry detergent that just says botanical and you think it's better better than the other stuff, but it really isn't. So but so I teach people how to um, you know, uncover the greenwashing and find, you know, ways to find the, the truly better products. Have you listened to last week's episode, which is 171, where I interview my husband, partner, tech guru, David, about the new Google update coming this summer. We talk all about how to get your blog ready, and we talk all in non-technical terms. I recommend you listen to it. In the podcast, we talk about Milo Tree and how David built it so it would not slow down your site one bit. Therefore, if you want to grow your followers and subscribers, this is the app for you this way. You can take your one-time visitors and keep them in your universe so that they can become part of your community. Head to milotree.com, get your first 30 days free, and now back to the show. So you write a blog post and then you say to yourself, I could put a lead magnet in this blog. Like how, start with how you think through this. Like yeah. when you go, I've got a blog post, I'm going to put a lead magnet in it. And then the lead magnet is going to say, say, uh, as soon as somebody signs up for it, they will get my tripwire. Like, how are you mm -hmm. building this? At what point do you start? And do you kind of go, wait, I've got a post, I could go put a lead magnet in, or you're setting this all up from the beginning? Um, yeah, I'd say it's been a combination of different tactics <laughs> uh, over the years, but but like one example, for instance, is um, I have a, a blog post about glean, green cleaning products, and I'm sharing all my favorite green cleaning products and brands in the blog post. But for a lead magnet, I'm offering them a green cleaning shopping guide, which has my favorite specific products for all the different cleaning chores, like you know, an all-purpose cleaner and a dishwashing detergent and a laundry soap and a stain remover and a toilet bowl cleaner, things like that. So, but all of my favorite brands in a printable PDF so they can take it with them shopping, that kind did, of a thing. Did you create the PDF like in Canva? Did you have somebody mm -hmm. do it? Is it a one sheet? Yeah, it's um, actually, I just had it revised. I'm using a VA who's helping me with some of these things. And so she made a beautiful new version. The original one I made was a bit, you know, a bit cheesy. I created it in Microsoft Word, I believe. <laughs> but now I'm, you know, having some of these older ones redone and, and they look much better. And so it's a, it has a cover and it has two, pa two pages beyond the cover. So it's, you know, it's a really nice looking PDF that someone can download once they get on my mailing list. Got it. And are you finding that the blog post specific opt-ins do better than say the general opt-in? Like where are you finding success? Well, overall, the general opt-ins do better because they are promoted in other parts of my blog. So maybe on the sidebar, if someone's using a desktop or on a pop-up that comes up on a desktop, you know, I use lead pages and lead pages has, you know, it ma just makes it really easy to put your lead magnets um, out there and make them um, look good and seen. And so, um, so overall, whatever the like kind of the primary one I'm I'm promoting, like I was saying, the one about the 10 easy ways to detox your home is the one that I'm getting the most traction from right now. But if someone goes to my mattress post, they get a pop up that says get on get my mattress shopping guide and then they'll get on the list. Right. So Got so it. I try to do it strategically for the posts that make the most sense or that maybe have more income potential and that kind of thing. Or the most traffic. The most traffic. Yes. So yep, that might be an indicator to, oh, I should make a specific lead magnet for this specific post because people are entering into my community via that post. Yep. Correct. Yeah. And this way yeah. I can kind so, of keep them in the loop. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then no. I do have a, a resource library on my blog. So once someone's a member on, on my email list, 
they can go and access my resource library with a, its password protected, but they ha have access to all of my lead magnets there. So, so as, it's kind and, of a and it's for free. free. It's a free mm -hmm. thing if you join your, yeah. e your email list. Yes. Yep. So that's a special perk of being on the email list. You can get access to all of them. And when did you, can I ask how many people are on your list right now? Um, currently about 3,000. Wow. I had about four, I had about 4,000, but I just did a big calling Good. of the list lately. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep on better um, on top of that because I want, you know, people that are really using it. And so I want um, to be sure to get rid of people that aren't really opening my emails. Absolutely. Now, one thing is through lead pages, I don't know if this is true. Can you have them deliver your opt-in? How does that work? Or are you doing it through yes. like your email service? Um, yes, you can have them deliver your opt-in. Got yep. it. So it's just once they get it, then they'll get an email with the opt-in. And then them. does that also connect to your tripwire? Can you set that up in lead pages? Or again, is that something you've set up yourself? Well, I set that up through lead pages, but it's the thank you page. So, so the thank you, once they've signed up, they get a thank you page. Thank you for signing up for my email list. Your down, your free download is on its way. And meanwhile, how would you like to, you know, don't, you know, don't miss out on this great deal, that kind of thing. And so then it's right there. And how much do you charge for your tripwire? How much does it normally sell on your site? And what is the discount of your tripwire? Uh, it is normally $47 and I'm selling it for $12 um, right now. I, I might change that. I've been thinking that um, it could be doing better. So I, um, I'm, I'm thinking about changing the price point on it just to experiment a little bit, yeah. maybe 1199 or, you know, you know right. how it is with prices. I sometimes, it's, sometimes the higher price is better and sometimes the lower price is better. So I need to do a little more testing with that. But yeah, I like how you are testing because you don't know. You have a hypothesis, but you until you put it out there, you have no idea how it will perform. So I say good for you for, for shaking yeah. it up and trying it. And then you can always change it back. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about then your email strategy. How often are you sending emails to your list? What are they filled with? Are you selling in your email list? Like, what is that? How do you use it? Yes. Yeah, so currently I'm sending two emails a week to my list. Wow, okay. Yeah, I've been pretty um, pretty consistent with that. Uh, lately, not always in the past, but now. Um, but I, uh, the first email will be whatever new blog post I've published that week. Um, I try to post one new blog post a week or a republished post that I am, um, you know, taking advantage of good older content and making it a little bit better and republishing it. So I'll po put that in. And so that's the first email. And then the second email, which goes out on Saturday mornings is my eco love list. And um, that is just, it's, it's a fun way for me to share a lot of different things that I've been loving or that I've been seeing lately. And it includes things like products, like products I've been using or recipes I've been trying or thinking about or DIY ideas that I've seen. And also articles, you know, people want to know about something having to do with recycling or with toxic chemical legislation or something like that, you know, like interesting articles. I just try to share all the cool things that I've seen that week, but it's also a chance for me to stick some affiliate links in there and you know tell people about some new products that I've been trying. So um, it works out really well that way. And it really sets you up as an expert. Like, oh, you know, Michaela knows this stuff. I need to open her email so I can stay up to date because she's my source. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, really that's... like how that puts you in a, in a position of, authority in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoy it too. It's fun. It's, and it's a way to be a little bit more personal too. So, um, you know, I might say a few things about like, just not much, but a little bit, like if I went on vacation or something about my kids or something like that, but just to make sure that they know I'm a human out there and not just a robot. <laughs> now, do people ask you questions? How do you find out what people are thinking? Do you ask for feedback? Do you do it on social media? Do you do it through email? How are you getting feedback? Mm -hmm. Well, um, in my um, welcome email, when someone first signs up on my email list, I do ask the question, what is your, um, your biggest uh, 
interest in green and healthy living? You know, what are you looking for? Um, and so I do get people uh, who respond to that. Not everybody, obviously, but I do learn a lot from that. Um, and then I also have a Facebook group now. I started, I've had a Facebook page for a long time, but of course those aren't doing so well anymore. So I started a Facebook group, I think it was in December of last year, maybe. Um, and it now has like almost 800 people in it, which is great. And so that's a great place I'm finding to actually have more of those discussions or, you know, communicate things, learn from people. And also on Instagram too, where people will, whenever anyone leaves a, leaves a comment, you know, it's something that you can learn from them. So um, I always appreciate that. And I, I try to ask questions in the Facebook group to get people, you know, to reply. <laughs> to make comments. It's not always easy. Um, and then another thing I do is occasional surveys of my audience where I'll just use like a Google, um, Google Form. survey, mm -hmm. uh, Google forms. Yeah. And I will um, ask questions and, and see, you know, what kind of answers I get, because that is always really helpful. So, and do you then yeah. use this feedback to determine what to create next? Yes. Yes. So I might ask, you know, what else would you like to learn about? You know, you know, do you want to learn about um, zero waste living or do you want to learn about uh, clean beauty or non-toxic cleaning or, you know, different areas like that? So I can learn from things that I ask and I ask demographic things like whether people have kids at home and things like that, too. And it's just always it's helpful and interesting to ask those questions. Now, are you making videos? A little bit. Yes. So share yeah. how you do that. And if, you know, because I think that there's always this pressure, like I need to be making videos, but how have, how have you incorporated video into your blog or into what you're doing? Yeah, I've done a few videos that I've put into posts, um, like about products that I've talked about. And then I've done Facebook lives in my Facebook group um, and on my Facebook page. Um, I've done webinars uh, a little bit. So, you know, a little bit of things. I, I feel like I can always be doing more, um, but it's, you know, hard to find the time. But, you know, I, ideally I would be doing a weekly Facebook Live in my Facebook group. That's my goal, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I get it. I get it little by little. Now, let's talk social media. Where are your people? Where, where, where do you, what do you like the best? Mm -hmm. And where are your people hanging out? I'd say it's a combination of Facebook and Instagram. Um, I really like Instagram because I am a very visual person. So I like it. Um, and, you know, I definitely have some you know, great interactions with people through Instagram, but I don't get a lot of uh, people visiting my blog directly from Instagram. I think that there is an indirect effect that we can't really measure in just that, you know, you become a, a recognized figure in, in, you know, in the industry or whatever, and people might look you up later and, and there's no way to track that. But so I think it's worth worthwhile to spend time on Instagram, even though I don't, you know, have a ton of traffic that comes from it. And what are, are you doing stories? Are you doing posts in your feed? What are you doing on Instagram then? Um, I I'm definitely do posts in my feed. I've just made a, an effort recently to try to do that more often. So I'm doing at least three, if not four posts um, on Instagram every week. And then I always share those as stories and I try to share other stories too. I, I'm not as great as spontaneously jumping on Instagram stories and talking but um, I will occasionally do that. Um, so I've done some of that. I've done a little bit of IG stories too, and I've done a little bit of the reels, um, but you know, uh, sometimes there just isn't enough time in the day to do I all that. Well, that's what I wanted to I ask do. you. I wanna ask you, you have your fingers in a lot of pots. And as bloggers, we have to wear a lot of different hats and manage a lot of things and know a lot about a lot of different technologies. How do you manage your time? Well, um, I am now outsourcing most of Pinterest. So I have one VA that does all the Pinterest scheduling for me using Tailwind and, and they have their own system. And I'm like, take it away. Cause now are you creating the pins? Are they creating the pins? Um, we create the pins, but I now have a separate VA who's creating the pins 
And then, I mean, I write most of the well she she writes some of the descriptions now too so actually um i'm really outsourcing as much of that as i can um and then once the pins are out there the other va takes them and does all the scheduling with tailwind and tribes and all that good stuff um so um and then a couple other another trick that i have which is that i use a, an app called post planner to feed um blog posts to my Facebook page on a regular basis and they're kind of on a schedule. So I don't have to do anything there. So it just makes sure that my Facebook page is continually putting out my older content. Now it's not being seen as much as, as I would like, but at least it's out there. Um, so that's another thing I do. But I'll, um, in terms of scheduling my time, I, um, I always try to put out a new blog post. I publish it on Monday. I put out the email on Tuesday for that blog post. So the first two days of the week are really kind of focused around that. And then I have other things that I do during the rest of the week. Like right now I'm working really hard on this online course. So that's taking most of my time. Other times of the year, I might be working on a new lead magnet or, um, you know, or other things like really diving into SEO, you know? So do things you like- get, Do you get burnt out? Yes. What do you do? How do you deal with burnout? Um, I just try to try to take a break if I'm feeling burnt out. You know, sometimes I feel a, get a little like down thinking, oh, I put in so much work and it's just not growing as fast as I would like. Um, I just try to make sure that I have a, have breaks and, and work on my mindset around it because um, I have a lot to be grateful for, for the way that my blog has worked out for me over the years, you know, and to be honest, I mean, I'm not looking to build an empire. I am just looking to create a really, you know, great resource for people and income to keep, keep it worthwhile. Right. So, um, so I'm, it's, it's worked out really well for me that way. And so I really can't complain, but every once in a while, sure. You know, you get a little sick of it. So I just try to take more breaks and, and I can, because I'm a self-employed blogger. I know, that is the thing that I, and I do think it is, I, 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 one thing I always talk about is how we think, cause we're inside of us. So we think the world revolves around us and therefore we think everybody's looking at us and paying attention to what we're doing. And I realize that, um, that people are, are into their own lives. And when you take a break, they're not really noticing. So it's okay to take a break and come back and just pick up where you left off and to not think, oh my God, I've lost half my audience. You haven't. They're right, right. there for you. So I right. think it's like being a little kinder to ourselves thinking, oh my God, they're all like, where is she? Well, the truth is they're really busy. They're not yeah. noticing. So I right. think it gives us more permission to take breaks and to take care of ourselves and recognize they're there. Exactly. Like I don't like I, my goal is to publish one blog post a week, but if I don't, that's really okay. No one's gonna, you know, quit following me just because I didn't post a new blog post. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So what about your business? Are you most excited right now? Well, I'm really excited to uh, explore the online course. Um, I've dabbled in it a little bit and I did. So I did a version of it last year, which didn't work out quite the way I wanted. I decided to revise it in some certain ways to make it a little more accessible and 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 really help the people that um, are more beginners and, and need the, the help the most. And so I'm really excited to, to just kind of develop this fourth leg of my income streams, which are these digital products, um, because I really like the idea of having um, a lot of different income streams so that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So if you know, an algorithm change happens, which it has happened and they will continue to do, is that you're not um, just going to be lost because you've, you know, lost a bunch of your traffic or something. So um, I just, I just am excited about that. And um, I think there's so much potential with digital courses these days. So I'm excited to build, you know, finish, get this one launched and maybe build another one for, you know, a bigger one. So, so, or maybe a membership. I mean, there's so many options, right? So it's exciting. I love that. Okay. Michael, I have to give you some feedback. I think that one of your, like, I always try to find people's special sauces and I think yours is your flexibility and that kind of excitement about 
what's around the corner and your willingness to roll with whatever changes. Because as an original blogger myself, we've seen a lot of changes. Some go our way, some don't, but it's, I think, the ability to ride through them and to go, okay, well, let's say this changed and now this strategy isn't working anymore. What could I do? What could I experiment with to, you know, go this way? And I feel that from you. So I just wanted to say, I feel like, you know, you you have this smile and you have this excitement about well, what direction can I go even after all these years and I think that's what it takes to be successful I would agree with that for sure and and that's what keeps it relevant and exciting too I'm someone who doesn't like the same same every day all the time I like the change I don't like you know I, I'm not saying I like it when Google <laughs> puts out an algorithm change that I don't like but I like um, always learning new things I'm one of those perpetual learners I'm always taking courses and learning how to do new things and if that's a way that I can continue to share what I'm doing with a larger population then that's great you know so that's that's how that works for me i really i really do like rolling with the changes i guess <laughs> yeah well i can feel that i really can so michael if people want to reach out to you how can they do that and learn more about what you're doing and learn about your course oh yeah i'm at mindfulmama.com and um, I do have a waiting list for my course right now. If you are interested, you can navigate to that through the, um, through the blog. Uh, and that'll be opening in mid-May of this year. Um, and otherwise, there are um, various lead magnets, as I talked about, if you want to join the mailing list and, and get going down the path of green and healthy living, that would be awesome. Um, I am at Mindful Mama, M-I-N-D-F-U-L-M-O-M-M-A on everything. So Instagram, Facebook, all of those things. And I have a Facebook community called Green and Healthy Community. So you can find me there as well. Oh, well, this has been such a pleasure. I love talking to the old timers just because <laughs> we've seen so much. Yes. Yes. It's been a ride, right? <laughs> totally. So thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you. I hope you guys like this episode. My biggest takeaway is that to stay in it for the long haul, you have to always be reinventing yourself. And sometimes that can be tricky because changes happen that might not go your way. But if you can be flexible and if you want to be experimenting with new things, trying new things, I think there is no better job. If you feel like this podcast is helping you grow your blog, please head to bloggergenius.com and sign up for my newsletter so you can stay abreast of what is happening in online business by hearing my four biggest takeaways from every single one of my episodes. Again, bloggergenius.com. Super easy to remember. And I will see you here again next week. 